problems, big problems for me. <laughs> so, and we're going to be taping this for much music, so you'll probably see this uh, parts of this on Pax later on, okay? Thank you very much for coming down, we really appreciate it. I guess I should ask that question. Are we ready? Are we ready? We're we can ready. hear we can hear ourselves. Can we hear this? Let's turn the feedback. Why is that feeding back now? Oh, I think it's a mic speaker. One, two. I think we're coming. There's too much in here, I think. That's the problem. <coughs> it's making us feedback as well. <coughs> it's booming. You hear all that? Yeah. Which, is, which will be a problem, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Let's get let's move these down a bit, shall we? One, two, and that's still booming a lot. Why Can you take the monitors down a bit? Are we all right? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, Tony. Roll tape. Let's get serious. Yes. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Queen guitarist, songwriter, and soon-to-be singer extraordinaire, Mr. Brian May. Give him a round of applause, please. Thank you, that's wonderful. I didn't expect that. <laughs> oh, come on now. This is an unusual situation, we should say this for the start. We've never, neither of us have ever tried this before, and I'm sure you haven't. So uh, this is an in-store uh, video come... Uh, radio come whatever gig so this is the first of its kind probably in the world the portable <laughs> concert the portable concert in store <laughs> all right now is queen going to tour behind oh, this album me with that? yes yes <laughs> you're the only one here and they want to know <laughs> well i i have to tour i mean uh, th there's no way of around that I have to tour. Uh, whether the others will come with me, I don't know, I'm working on it. Um, at the moment, Freddie still doesn't feel like he wants to. I mean, he did 20 years on the road, he probably has a right to have a rest, so uh, I have to respect that for the time being. But um, my plan is to finish off my solo album and get out there on my own to fill the gap in the time being until uh, things change. So that's what's going to happen, I hope. I hope to have my solo album finished by the end of the year and tour either the end of this year or the beginning of next. In so, in Canada, of course. Right. Now, your solo record, what, what form is that going to take? Because the last one was a rather grandiose project. Well, the last one was... Um, the, last one, the last one happened by accident just because uh, I wanted to get out there. I guess it's the same kind of feeling as now, but this is more songs. I don't want to put out a guitar virtuoso, you know, play at lightning speed for ten hours kind of album. I want to put songs out the same as the band do. Yeah. And uh, uh, he has it. <laughs> a good old Starfleet album, yeah. That isn't available anyway, I'm sure, here at the moment. But I think that as soon as I do my personal deal with Hollywood Records, um, the first thing I'm going to get them to do is put this out on CD as well. Yeah. So there's lots of things in the melting pot. I hope. Was this difficult to do now? I mean, this was only a day's work, really. I just rang up Edward Van Halen, who was a friend at the time, and still is, and said, shall we do something? Because we always talk about it and never do anything, you know. And, um, and he said, yeah, I'll be happy to. And Alan Gratzer was nearby, who's from Mario. He said, yeah, let's do something. So I, I wasn't going to have all those guys in there and not have anything prepared. So I had a couple of songs that I wanted to try out and bounce off on. And uh, we went from there. It was just like a huge jam session, really, for about... Uh, well, I don't know, 14 hours solid, I suppose. Mm. And then I went away and, and didn't fiddle with it that much, just mixed it, uh, did a bit of extra singing. But basically, I didn't want to mess with it because it was, it had the feeling of something live and uh, real. You know? So it wasn't actually produced much as such. The new album will be produced, but I, I want a little bit of rough edge on there too. Hello? <laughs> I was mesmerized. <laughs> yes, well, we're doing it. I, yeah. Like I said, we've done this before, but tell me, what's required of a guitar player in Queen, you as a guitarist, what, live and in the studio? Um, that's a big question, really. Um, I guess we're all songwriters, and I think that is uppermost in all of our minds, strangely enough. Uh, so the two things go hand in hand. First of all, you want to go on stage and make a noise, make contact with people, that, which is why we're in it. Secondly, we have something to say, which is the songwriting side. 
So generally speaking, if things are going well, you'll do the album and that's, that takes care of the creation bit and then you go out and actually do it to people and that's where the reality is. So I've been missing that a lot. It actually hurts quite a bit not to be able to be out there with the band. And it's been quite a long time now, so it is hard. Well, what we're going to do now is we've got a few tracks lined up. Yeah. And um, the first one, I believe, is Tie Your Mother Down. Um, <laughs> And um, he's going to actually play along to the track. Well, we see what we can we'll see do. What we can do. Any memories of the uh, of the album at that point and of that track? Um, it was a riff that I had in my head for a long time. What was that riff? Which goes uh, along, etc. Um, and I had it for ages, and it, I didn't really have the song, but I had the sound of da di da di da and I said, it, it goes like, tie your mother down, tie your mother down, to the band. And I said, but you can't use that, because that's a silly title, right? And they went, no, that's not so silly, you could use that. Uh, or else they said, it's silly enough to use, you know. So, um, and strangely enough, once the song starts to materialize in your mind, you find out what you were trying to say. You know, that very often happens, like halfway through you writing something, you realize what you're trying to say. So I suppose it's a kind of um, song about frustration <laughs> in general. All right then, let's do it. Yeah, we can have a go. Let's hear the track first. How does this one go? <laughs> <laughs>
have to, I'll be very honest with you, it takes a lot more courage to do this than it, than it takes to do that in front of 20,000 or 100,000 people. It's strange and different. I think I like it. That's all right. Yeah, it would be nice to be in tune, wouldn't it? It would, it would help if I was in tune, but never mind, you can't have everything. Now, while you were playing that, uh, what was running through your mind? I mean, when was the last time you played this song live? A while ago, a while ago, a while ago. Um, I know what's going through my mind. I'm thinking about the people here, and I'm thinking I'm not in tune, and I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking is it loud or is it soft? Or, you know, I'm thinking I can't hear the, the beat, because the thing about playing live is you feel the drums as well as hear them. You know, that's what, it, what drives you along. You know, I can hear Roger's backbeat, and if I lose that, I'm lost, you know. So it's kind of strange. Well, for the new strange. album, though, you, you went into the studio and, well, you went into a room, you told me, a yeah. rather large room, and everyone got together and played like you did years ago. Yeah, it's, um, I think one of the, the results of not being on the road is that the adrenaline goes into the studio. It seems to work quite well. So if we want to get our rocks off, we actually go in there and play and we roll the tape. So you hear on, on Innuendo quite a lot of live takes. Um, which I think is, is a good thing, because we're very much against the mechanized way of doing things. You know, you do that as a last resort, or else you do it as a writing tool. You know, to get the best performances, you've got to be playing together. There's no other way. So that's definitely our preference. I don't like all this uh, tick -tick 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 business, you know. I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> <laughs> What was it like working with David Bowie on Under Pressure? <coughs> it was, um, difficult. Uh, as you see, there's, there's, there's four uh, giant egos in our band, you know, and then you have another one coming in, you know, who's probably the equivalent of all of us. You know. <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> but he's damn good, anyway. But, um, we wrote it in the studio, and it was actually fairly difficult because we're all seeing the thing in different ways. And uh, it took a lot to tie it down to being a song. I like the song a lot, and David had a lot to do with it. I mean, he, he, his was the major contribution to the lyrics, I would say, although we're all kicking bits in. Um, I like the song, I hate the mix, I always did. Um, and I wasn't there when it was done, because it was all getting well too crazy by that time. Uh, it's one of the few times I've not been there to mix, and um, I always felt it could have sounded a lot better. Strangely enough, you know, we, we're now signed to Hollywood Records, which is the reason I'm here, really, because they've been putting in such a big effort, I felt guilty that we weren't, you know. Um, and Hollywood Records are reissuing all our old catalogue on CDs. And they said, wouldn't it be nice if we could do some remixes? So that's where you have this strange Rick Rubin remix of We Will Rock You, which has elephants flying all over it or whatever. Um, and one of the prime candidates would have been under pressure, but the funny thing is no one can find the tape. It's gone. Somewhere between David's office, our office, Montre Montreal, London, it's gone. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> he has it? Me here! I can do a decent mix. <laughs> so that's the story of that. The tape is gone. Yeah, no one can find it. We all thought, you see, it's one of these old situations where everybody thought someone else was doing it. So it, we all thought that our, you know, the old Queen tapes are somewhere nice and safe in Abbey Road. Turns out they're all over the place. And uh, it's been a real hard job finding everything to re-release. So everything is becoming reissued now, right? Everything's reissued, and we've gone back to source. The reason being that a lot of the CDs in Europe um, were put out, made off the EQ'd masters, or a few generations down, and so they don't sound that good. We've been going back for the Hollywood stuff and remastering digitally from the original, and it's big improvement. It's like night and day, really. You can hear so much more in there. So it's good stuff. When it finally gets out, you know, there's four of them out already, and by the end of the year, the rest of them will be out. It also fills a huge gap in this country because we lost three albums here. You know, I'm being very honest now. We, um, Which three? I would say we lost um, Kind of Magic, The Works, and Hot Space a little too, and also Life Killers. Actually, it's more than three albums, isn't it? It's a lot. And, you know, I, I've been going to radio stations and people have been phoning up and saying, well, you know, can you play Hammer to Fall, which is what we did at Live Aid, and the station will go, I'm sorry we don't have that, it, it never arrived, you know, so there's been this huge gap between us and all of North America, which happily now seems to be getting uh, patched up again. What about the box set that's only available in Europe? Yeah, 
That's right. Although I think uh, Hollywood planned to do a box set in the end, yeah, once the, the stuff is all out, yeah. I think they're planning to do a box to put it in or something. <laughs> we all like these little toys. There's a great collector's item. They do sort of snippets of each album, which is called Queen Rocks, and those things, if you can get them, are, are a nice little collector's item. They're in a box about this big. <laughs> Everybody loves toys, don't they? So I think we've got uh, Under Pressure done, and were you pleased with your guitar performance, or was it just mixed way? Yeah, it's not mixed right, really. Um, there was a lot more on there, but... Um, so we're going to hear a lot more now? I can put a little bit in, yeah, if I get the urge. <laughs> Do you want him to put a little bit more in? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to listen first. <laughs> you know this riff? Here, which are a bit kind of, but uh, it's close, it's almost like playing, you know, <laughs> almost like a gig man. <laughs> 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 
That's what we got to do. Hey, man. So I think we should maybe take a few questions from the audience. Okay, yeah. So we've got this man's face in front of the microphone here. So if you have a question. Sir, sir do you have a question? Yes, I do. Number one, Brian, welcome to Canada. Thank you. Toronto. It's uh, great to be here. First question, these remixes. Uh, yeah. Do you have any input into them at all? Or is it and yes, well, if we started off doing them ourselves, we're a bit feeding back here again, aren't we, really? But, um, I don't know if you can take us down out there a bit. Can you hear that? It's ringing. Um, we started off doing them ourselves, and then we thought to ourselves, well, what's happening is we're trying to redo something which we did in the old days, and basically you want to do it the same, because most of those old mixes I'm pretty proud of anyway. And I said to the uh, Hollywood people, why don't we see if, if someone else has a fresh view on this? It would be nice to give it to someone who didn't have that much reverence for the original material and would, would have a completely new slant on it. So that's what we did. We sort of farmed them out to various people who wanted to do it. It became something that people wanted to do, which is nice. You know, so a lot of producers have done um, you know, very sort of state-of-the-art stuff with, with our old material. And it's, it's a thrill all around. It, it, the nice thing is we don't lose the original material because it's still there on the album. This is just additional stuff. So Rick Rubin, when he called it, uh, what does he call it? The, ruined. Uh, ruined. Ruined. Rick Rubin Ruination. But it's great fun. And um, there's a lot of good stuff coming out on the next wave as well. And uh, I think Bob Rock is doing one. Um, uh, the guy who remixed uh, I Can't Live With You, who's called uh, Brian um, Wolf is doing some, he's great too. So it's good, it's a little bit of fresh input and it doesn't take much energy from us, so that's nice, you know. We can get on with it. You see, what we said was we should be spending our energy making the new stuff. You don't want to be delving back into history all the time. Let's get on with the new music, so that's what we're doing. We're halfway through, Innuendo is out and doing pretty good, much better than anything's done in this country for a while. Um, it's number one everywhere else, of course. And, uh, <laughs> And we're already halfway through the next album, so I'll be going back as soon as I get back and we'll be doing some more. Yeah. And Fred is in even greater form. I wanted to know how come yours doesn't have the lock on the... I don't like string locks. I don't blame you. This had one on, but I took it off. I don't to me, blame it's, you. Yeah, it spoils the uh, action here. You see, everything's a compromise in life. It's a shame, isn't it? When we were making the original guilds, I said, I don't want this, I want to have our own tremolo, because I designed my own tremolo. But it was so ridiculously expensive for them to tool up and make my tremolo that we ended up going with the compromise, which is the Kayla, which is a pretty good system, but it involves having this lock up here, which I didn't like. So I just took it off for mine, and it still works fine. Oh, okay. I'll just take mine off. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, with the glasses on. Oh, sorry. Okay, keep going. Hi. Is uh, Queen any more soundtracks? We're doing... Um, the last soundtrack we did together was The Highlander, and since then I've done... Uh, thanks. Um, since then we've been offered a lot of stuff, but we haven't agreed to do anything together. It can be divisive in the group, because one of us tends to get more into it than, than another, you know. But I've been doing... I've done a soundtrack for Macbeth for a theatre production in London, which unfortunately I don't think is coming here. I don't think it's like a chart album, but it's a, something which I would like to have out there for interest's sake. Are you any part of uh, Highlander 2? Part of the Highlander 2 film? Well, it, ah, glad you asked. Highlander 2, they didn't ask us to do. Which is, it's political, it's political. There was a big falling out because the guy that we uh, worked with on the music, Michael Caine, because artistically I would have loved to have done it, you know, Who Wants to Live Forever should have been taken to the next step and Prince of the Universe, it would have been great. I've seen the movie, anybody seen the movie? Yeah! It's not bad, is it? I mean, it's water in the jukebox or whatever and kind of magic comes out, so they put that in, but it's like a botched job. It's, if we'd have done the music, we would have done the music, it would have been different. And I think the film would have felt a lot different. Yeah. That's Highlander too. They also use it once to live forever. There's a little reprise in there, which sure. they didn't tell us about. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? Sure. They didn't ask us either. Well, it was not paid. They sure didn't pay us. <laughs> oh. okay. Okay. Uh, how much truth is there to all the rumors about Freddy dying? He's not dead. He's all right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, now we have requests. Of course, everybody wants to hear him play again, right? Yeah. Can we, take a, can we take two seconds just to get this in tune okay. and maybe get the sound of the book? Can you give me a little bit?
sorry about this, this is very unprofessional, but uh, there's no other way at the moment. Yeah, hold it a second. It's me that's out of tune. <laughs> um, what can we do about this? While we're doing this, uh, just getting everything together. Special thanks to HMV. Give them a round of applause. My cameraman, Tony Warner, give them a round of applause. He's making you look good. All right. As ready as I'll ever be. What are we going to play? Uh, well, actually, we're going to do something.
and gentlemen. Queen fan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Hi, Mr. May. It's a real pleasure. Name's Ian. Thanks for coming, man. I'm always wrong to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Great. Thanks a lot. See you soon, eh? All right. Great to see you. Oh, our first suit. Our first suit. So, when did you start listening to Queen? Uh, 73, 72. Way back, yeah. Uh, got the new album? Uh, yeah, I've got it at home though. I didn't bring it today because I figured I'd buy it from HMV. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're here at HMV with uh, Brian May and fans. Uh, he's been playing here today. He's been answering questions from fan, fans and my own questions. And uh, now he's signing autographs. And uh, this is a major nice guy. Uh, this is our friend. Can you put CJ, your stone cold crazy? Okay. Yeah. First speed. Okay. Today we're at HMV with Brian May of Queen. He's in Toronto to promote the album In You Window, sign a few autographs, play live, and answer some questions from the audience. You're right. He's a nice guy. <laughs> It's a favorite of mine. I write all kinds of stuff over it and I don't sign it. Yeah. 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 The creek from last night. <laughs> oh, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're both back. <laughs> <laughs> Just make your neck. Hey. The blood in it. Yeah. That's great. Whoa. I took that ten years ago. Crucial. I should say crucial. So now, once again, how important are your fans? Just to get the whole thing. Totally crucial. Totally. <laughs> They're wonderful. These guys are wonderful. Very good to be back out there. I tell you, in any form. I just wish we were playing properly. You know. Yeah. But that's life. You know. Yeah. Now, years ago, George Duke called you up and asked you to do a guitar solo for Jeffrey Osborne. Pleased to meet you too. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. You're not very Canadian. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice no more to pictures, you. Thank you. Oh, you don't want to get you to sign money. That's all it's good. All right. Sure. Sign the $50 bill. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like you completely worth it. Hey, it's on. Oh, hold on. You got all my right. pet. I knew you were one of those. Okay. Tony, you have to speak. You were the reason why you're paying okay. 15 years ago. I saw them in concert, took a picture of you guys, and you're the reason why I'm in photography today. Thank you. Yeah, right. Great. I'm so, pleased to hear that. So now, why did, tell me about that guitar solo with, Jeff, with uh, Jeffrey Osborne. Um, well, Jeffrey was a friend because the guy who used to manage our band, Jack Nelson, now manages Jeffrey. So we met a few times socially, and it just seemed like a nice idea. It kind of came up in conversation that I would have a go at a track, and it happened to be Stay With Me Tonight, which was totally up my street, really. So I just did a little solo for him, you know, it didn't take very long to do. I did another track called, um, what is the other one called? It's something, uh... From the same album? Because it's on the same album, which I actually spent a lot more time doing. It just, for some reason, it took a lot, a lot more, uh, more doing. I forget what it's called now. It's something like, don't think twice, it's all right, but it's not that. You better delete this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> anyway, I had a great, I had a good time doing it. I mean, Jeffrey's great, and Jeffrey does everything first take. He's unbelievable. Brilliant, brilliant singer. Yeah. So have you had fun here today? Definitely. Very, very nice. Wouldn't do it every day in my life. <laughs> I, get, I get too uh, nervous, you know. <laughs> 